Hello, I'm Esteban, a technical account manager here at the AWS office in San Jose, Costa Rica. Today, I'm going to show you the two options for using persistent storage in Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service. Let's get started. In Amazon EKS, you can use Amazon Elastic Block Storage or Amazon Elastic File System as persistent storage by deploying the respective container storage interface driver. As prerequisites, you must make sure that you are running kubectl 1.14 or greater installed. You're running the most recent version of the AWS CLI and EKS CTL. Before deploying the persistent storage options, you must make sure that an AWS Identity and Access Management OpenID Connect provider exists for your cluster. To verify this, first view your cluster OpenID Connect provider URL with this command. Replace the cluster name with your own. Confirm that an IAM OpenID Connect provider is configured. Run this command and include the OpenID Connect ID, which is the last portion of the previous command's output. If you receive an error for the previous command that states, no OpenID Connect provider found in your account, then you must create an IAM OpenID Connect provider before proceeding. If you don't receive an error, then an IAM OpenID Connect provider already exists. You can use EKS CTL to create the IAM OpenID Connect provider. Run this command, replacing the cluster name with your own. Create an IAM trust policy file. Note that you must customize the command with your account number, the region you are working in, and with the OpenID Connect provider URL that you got in the previous command. Create the IAM role using this command. There is an AWS Manage IAM policy for the EBS CSI driver that you can use for this IAM role. Attach it to the role that you created in the previous command. Deploy the Amazon EBS CSI driver using the EKS add-on feature. Use this command, customizing it with your own cluster name and your AWS account number. At this point, we can test the EBS CSI driver with a sample application that uses dynamic provisioning for the pods. Clone the repository from GitHub with this command. Change your working directory to the cloned repository. Create the Kubernetes resources for the test application. The following command creates a storage class, persistent volume claim, and a pod that uses an EBS volume. You can verify the details of the storage class created with this command. Note that the provisioner is now ebs.csi.aws.com. Watch the pods as they are being deployed with this command. Wait for the app pod status to change to running. When the pods are running, you can confirm that the persistent volume was created. Note its ID because you'll use it in the next command. Describe the persistent volume details with the ID from the previous command. You can confirm that the source type is CSI and the driver is ebs.csi.aws.com. Additionally, you can confirm the ID of the physical Amazon EBS volume under the source.volume handle value. You can confirm that the pods are writing the volume. Run the following command to download an example identity and access management policy to allow worker nodes to create and modify EBS volumes. Create an IAM policy using the example policy with this command. View your cluster's OpenID Connect provider URL with this command. Replace the cluster name with your own. Create an IAM trust policy file. Note that you must customize the command with your account number, the region you're working in, and with the OpenID Connect provider URL that you got in the previous command. Create the IAM role and annotate its ARN. You need this for a later command. 
attach the newly created IEM policy to the role. Customize it with your account ID. Deploy Amazon EFS CSI driver. If you're working in any region other than China regions, use the following command. For the Beijing and Ningxia China regions, run this command. Edit the file public-ecr-driver.yaml on the service account efs-csi-controller-sa section. Enter the IEM role ARN that was annotated from the previous commands. Now let's proceed to deploy the EFS CSI drivers. If your cluster contains nodes, use this command. If your cluster contains only AWS Fargate pods, then use this other command. Get the BPC ID and CIDR from your EKS cluster. Remember to enter your own cluster name and BPC ID. Allow traffic to the EFS mount points by creating a security group and a rule that allows inbound NFS traffic. Edit the VPC ID and VPC CIDR with your own and note the group ID for the ingress rule creation. Create the Amazon EFS volume to be used by the pods. Save the file system ID for the next step. A mount target for the EFS volume is created. Enter the file system ID and the security group ID from the previous outputs. The subnet IDs depend on the region that you're working in. As best practice, create a mount target on each availability zone where you have worker nodes running. You'll need to run the command once for each availability zone. At this point, you can start using the EFS CSI driver. Let's test it with an example application. Clone the Git repository and change your working directory. In the files that were downloaded from GitHub, look for aspects slash pv.jaml file, and then replace the aspect.csi.volume handle value with your Amazon EFS file system ID from previous steps. Create the resources by running the command. You can wait for the resources to be created. The persistent volume can be obtained by running this command. By describing the persistent volumes, you can confirm that they are running with the EFS CSI driver. Write test data on the pods to confirm that they are both writing to the same file on Elastic file system that was created. And now you know the two options for using persistent storage in Amazon EKS. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.